Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop, and tonight our guest is Dave Fenoy. Dave, say hi. Well, hi everybody. How you doing? All right, we got lots of cool stuff to cover tonight with Dave, and uh, if you've got questions for for Dave Fenoy, because this guy knows everything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how am I going to? You can tell by the that? gray beard, can't you? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, Guess, uh, looking very sagely gray, there. Gray, gray means wisdom. That's right. Well, then I'm feeling particularly wise. If any of you have a question for him, though, throw it in the Facebook chat room, and uh, we will get that question to him a little bit later on. But we got lots to ask him. And, George, anything to add? Nope. Just want to be pretty. All right. Ah, uh, uh, there you go. All right. Three pretty guys ready for voiceover body shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to voiceover body shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, good evening or good afternoon, depending on where you are. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. All, All right. right. Yes. We're here. All right. Apparently, every time I slap, everybody's got to take a drink. I'm not exactly sure where it, what started. I don't know that, who started that one. Yeah. But, you know, in that case, I'm putting my hands in my pockets. And I'm just going <laughs> to stay like this the entire night and in, the, <sighs> in this squeaky chair. <laughs> There we go. Anyway, uh, we've got lots to talk about tonight. Uh, hopefully you're all doing well during this continued stay at home situation. And uh, because of that, we got to talk to our guest at his home. But he's got a wonderful home because we've been there. And right. let's bring him in right now. A guy that is has done everything in voiceover, is big in, in gaming and has one of the nicest voices it's like a cup of coffee, a hot cup of coffee. <laughs> Dave Fenoy. Dave, welcome back back, back to VoiceOver Body Shop. Well, I, I hope everybody likes a nice cup of hot coffee. <laughs> Who doesn't? Oh, there, there's some people out there. Yeah, I'm a tea person myself. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah, I like them both. I, I, well, how you guys doing? We're we're doing fine. You know, we're oh, getting fantastic. You know, it's, it's been a while since I got to hang out with you guys, and and when I did, we were uh, we were in your studio. Yeah, yeah, and, and, it, and I, it's a uh, it's a different world now. It is. I'm all alone in here. It's yeah. kind, of, kind of weird. And I mean, yet, I, and yet, here we are together. And it's amazing. It's it's this really is what amazing. we get. Yeah. Luckily, by the time you've come on the show, we have, we've worked out all the <laughs> technical hurdles to make this look like we know what we're doing. Yeah. It was not easy for the first couple of months. But yeah. Oh, boy. Had to yeah, had sure. had you know, release a bunch of valves and get these things running. Anyway. So anyway, Dave, uh, first, before, before we really get into some of the other stuff that we can talk about, can we talk a little bit about where you're from originally and, and how you got into voiceover? Well, contrary to my uh, 
wiki page, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wikipedia page, it, it was wrong. Uh, I was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, that's right. And uh, as when I was a kid, uh, we called it the armpit of the nation. Um, I thought that was and, Toledo, actually. But, you know. Well, you know, there's two armpits. <laughs> right. And, and I'm from Buffalo. I was the other armpit of Lake Erie. The third so armpit. It was, <laughs> it was, you know, it was like that uh, Hindu god with the multi-arms. All oh, right. Um, but uh, uh, born and raised in Cleveland. Uh, I left when I was 18 uh, to go to college uh, in Minnesota. Uh, went to school for a while couple of years dropped out went on the road as a musician for a few years and went back to school uh at howard university uh got out uh as a musician uh played music for a while then i realized i wasn't going to grow up to be a rock and roll star after all <laughs> and i uh went into radio and i was uh one of those uh, uh jocks in san francisco san francisco bay area uh, last gig being uh, Morning Jacket 107.7 KSOL. I'm Billy David Ocean, and we're getting it on with you. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but I discovered voiceover work while I was uh, on the radio. And uh, it seemed over the years, you know, that's, that's where I need to go. That's what I needed to go. This, this is going to be much more fun than just radio, which was fun. But, oh, there's cartoons, and, and there's TV promos, and there's commercial, and there's narration. And at that time, there were no video games, uh, not for voice actors anyway. But uh, now there's video games, too. Yeah, we, we can talk about that. So I'm, and, 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 and here you are in L.A. and one of the most respected people in the business. Uh, how have you been faring during all of this nutso stay-at-home stuff? You know, I almost feel a little guilty, but I haven't really missed a beat. Um, I had a lot of clients that I was working from home with anyway. I've had a home studio for 20-something years. Uh, so I didn't have to gear up uh, to do anything. It's It's the way it's been for me for a long time. Uh, there are AAA games and commercials uh, that have wanted you to come into their home studio or home studio, their uh, professional studios uh, that couldn't. And uh, so, you know, I've seen a lot of, uh, oh, oh, tell us about your studio. We want to know what microphone you use. Uh, what's your booth? Uh, what's your DAW? What's your interface? Um, can you send us a sample? So forth and so on. Uh, there's been a lot of that lately, and I know a lot of people who uh, may have rushed into home studios probably are uh, a little bit over their heads. You know, that thing of uh, you could do it. It's actually not that hard, but when so much information's coming at you, sometimes you're just a little bit, ah, and, and uh, what do I do? Who push this button here? Oh no. Ah. Yeah. George and I, you're real familiar with that the last two yeah. and a half, three months. Or, or, who, oh, or who do I listen to, right? Who do I listen right. to it for advice too? That's another problem because people Wait. have, a, there's an avalanche of, of free advice coming at everybody right now. And, and not good. I've seen a lot of it. I've seen a lot of it, but I've also discovered that just because the advice isn't always the same doesn't mean that, that it's bad advice. Uh, there are more more roads to Rome than one. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you, you've had a studio for 20 years, and then we've got all of these people who've been getting these edicts from the studio, and like you said, they were asking you, well, what kind of a microphone do you does it really matter is, is really the, the point, because we're always of the, the mind of, it's what the studio sounds like. If it sounds yeah. good, it is good. And well, the I think the microphone is way down the chain. Yeah. What's the room you're recording in? That that's probably the most important thing of all. Uh, you can have the best mic in the world, the best uh, recording uh, software. They're all the same. Um, the best interface. Uh, but if the room sucks and you've got you know, sound bouncing around or it's too flat or too live, uh, you, none of the rest of that's going to help. 
Yeah, well, we we, we know that. <laughs> it's, well, it's, I, it's, I know it's, you guys know, yeah, but well, I, yeah. hopefully there's an audience out there. That, <laughs> well, oh, we definitely have an audience, but we we like hearing it from you because it just it just reinforces what we've been teaching all these years that you know, yeah. number yeah. one, acoustics is number one. Yeah, that's that's the first thing. Yeah. Uh, and there are a lot of ways to get a decent sounding room uh, without spending a fortune. Uh, I always tell uh, newbies or people who are new uh, trying to set up a home studio, well, a closet with clothes in it, uh, <laughs> you know, you got clothes, you got a closet, uh, it might not work out so bad for you. Yeah, bigger the wardrobe, the better it is. That's right. It, you know, we've and we've got a lot of fluffy, furry, soft stuff hanging in there. <laughs> yeah, and, and the the more the better. And, and I know a lot of people making good money next to their underwear. So I had it, <laughs> and in their underwear, by the way. I was going to say it's more fun to make it next to your underwear than wearing your underwear. Just, wait, can I can I put something to rest here? I have Please. never worked. I've never worked in my pajamas. Uh, underneath my clothes, I do have underwear. But I've never worked in pajamas or underwear alone. Wow. Is it because it just, when you go into your booth, you like to feel like you're going to work? Uh, well, you know what? Uh, just partially. Um, I get up, um, you know, do what I needed to walk the dogs, uh, do a little exercise uh, and get dressed. Actually, I'm dressed when I'm walking the dogs. But then I go in, I, I treat every day as a work day, even though I'm just going downstairs to my studio. Um, I mean, I start late. I'm If I have to be in there by nine, I'm in there by nine. Usually it's 10. Uh, and I have no problem working late. You know, I might be in studio until eight or nine, but I get to take breaks in the middle of the day. You know, you've had a couple of students or a couple of gigs and oh, I need a break. I'm going to go upstairs and chill out for a little bit and turn on the news and, oh, God, now I'm depressed and uh, <laughs> come back and do some work. Yeah. Uh, so what what have you been able to continue to do? Is there anything that you found that you know, there's more of because of the situation? What is there less of? And what really has what has what has changed in you know over that period well you? there was a in terms of work it's it's about the same um in terms of work that uh i'm doing and the, the ratio of work i'm doing at home to work i'm doing outside has changed of course because the studios closed down and you couldn't do anything and at first they were postponing gigs uh, especially video game gigs, commercial gigs that they were going to wanted to have you in another studio. And after a while, they went, wait a minute, this is going on longer than we thought. Let's find out uh, how good that studio is. And so now uh, I'm doing video games and commercials from here. Um, I always was doing uh, narration and some uh, smaller games and uh, some smaller commercials. But uh, the big the big boys, the triple A's always wanted you in their studio so that we could have complete and total control over the sound. Uh, but that has gone by the wayside now. However, I, I have my first out of my studio gig since the quarantine on Wednesday. Ah, all right. So they're, they're starting to open up. Which studio is it, up. Dave? Can you say which studio it is or? Um, you don't have to. I, you know, I, I, I don't know that they want that advertised and yeah, yeah. Uh, rather them uh, tell you than me tell you sure uh but what they have said is there will only be one other person in the building uh which will be the engineer uh and all the other people will be you know from someplace else on the yeah. planet yeah maybe across town maybe across the country yeah i found it fascinating because i was hearing from several people that especially from the in the video game uh world that they were actually delivering equipment to people. Like that's going to yes. make a difference. Yeah. It's like, well, you have to have the same mic as this person. Yeah, but if this person's doing it from their bathroom, it really isn't going to help. You know, I, I think uh, uh, people were panicking, and uh, I don't think that was the engineers. Uh, the guys, the recordists, the guys that you're working with in, in those studios are pros. They they know that you know it's not just the equipment it's it's the uh environment uh and they can't just send you a room right uh but you know 
I heard microphones, uh, 737s, uh, various other equipment being sent to people uh, so that they could duplicate the exact sound of this, that, or the other. I had a lot of recording where they wanted to record at 96. Uh, yeah. Uh, 96 I, kilohertz sample rate? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. What steam? Because your voice computer. has twice <laughs> as high frequencies in it than mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, and I didn't know this, but uh, several of the bigger games I've been working on, that's the way they've been recording. Uh, in 96, which if you don't have to have a an online component to it as well, uh, isn't a problem for that studio. But if you're trying to do a Zoom session uh, and so you've got that signal going and you're trying to uh, record 96, your computer uh, and Zoom goes, I, I don't know what to do. Uh, and you know, stuff would click in and click out, and oh, we got to reconnect, but we finally got it done. Yeah, we well, finally got it. Done. Well, it, we know it sounds better than the 8 bit games <laughs> back, from, <laughs> <laughs> back, back from the <laughs> late 80s. TI 994 know, A. <laughs> it, uh, there, there was a point in, in teaching uh, some voiceover for video games. I, I wanted to go back and do comparison of what some of the first. Uh, voiceovers and video games were like, I could not believe how bad some of this stuff was. And not just bad because, uh, you know, oh, we need a girl on this one. Uh, tell a secretary to take lunch and come in here. You know, Oh, yeah. Oh, we need an old guy. Is your dad retired? Can we? Uh, they were doing that kind of thing. But sometimes they would record and then record something else. And you'd hear two things, one of which wasn't supposed to be there. Oh. Just, just amazingly bad stuff. Well, uh, as the video game industry has grown up and the people who play video games have grown up uh, and the technology has gotten better, man, uh, it's just amazing what they can do now. And I really believe it. They, they have to insist on good voice actors to pull it all off because when the graphics are so good, when the pictures are so good, uh, when the sound is so good, you, you can't have bad acting. Oh, I would hope not. How, how have video games changed your professional life? Because I mean, you're, you still do all the narration and stuff, but was, did that like give you a whole breath of fresh air of stuff to do? Well, it did give me a whole breath of fresh air of stuff to do and um, gave me a uh, fans. You know, when I got in the business, uh, I wanted to work, make a decent living. Um, when I first came to town, the thing that my agents were pushing me for most was TV promos. And I did a lot of them. I was a Disney Channel voice. Uh, I was a voice uh, for uh, CBS and ABC, uh, the WB and uh, SoapNet, a bunch of different things. And I still do uh promo work i'm just not under contract to anybody so if you're out there listening i'm i'm available uh hulu for me was a big thing for a number of years um but that was the direction they were sending me and i did a, a few cartoons as well um I did captain planet and uh um pro stars um uh, gosh, getting old, gray hair, can't talk anymore, can't remember. But I, I did a number of cartoons, and somehow in the late 90s, early 2000s, a video game thing started. And I did a number of uh, games for Lucasfilm. Uh, I got to play Lando Calrissian in one of their games. I played a pod racer, and I had to do the whole thing in Huttese, the language of Jabba the Hutt. One of the toughest jobs ever, a five-hour session, shouting the whole thing in Huttese, playing three different characters. At the, at the end of it, I'd lost my voice. Mm. And uh, I was done for a week, and I was supposed to do an ESPN uh, sports show. Is it going to be there? And it's ESPN sports with so-and-so, you know, welcome to. And uh, couldn't do it. Uh, had to bail out with a couple days notice that producer has never hired me again. Ah, 
Well, that was, I mean, that was really the, the controversy in the video game business, you know, amongst voice actors is that it was very wearing on people's voices. Has that it, changed since, since the strike? Uh, the wearing on your voice has not changed. What has changed is uh, the directors and producers actually are kind of on your side to help you protect your voice. Uh, they still want the screaming if you are coming into a session and it says battle chatter at the top uh be afraid be very afraid um but they give you more breaks uh they're going to spend less time on that uh nowadays you have a lot of games that it's it's not just one session you're going to be doing a number of sessions over the course of days or weeks uh or even years on some games uh and they try to break up uh, that very hard, uh, damaging work um, to, you know, like Fridays or just a couple hours on this day as opposed to a four-hour session of doing that. So you, you've got people on your side trying to help you with your voice, but uh, it can still be rough. Yeah, well, it, yelling will do that and it, because it's a lot of... It's not it's like you were saying you're you're doing it in a different language or it's a lot of grunting and all that you know oh yeah i'm i got well, can't really i mean my understanding is you can't really kind of audiobook yell or you know no. fake yell they're no. really looking for authenticity, they're, they're looking right? for the real thing they want authenticity as a matter of fact i think you do more damage uh if you're trying to constrict it down and make it uh you know pretend yell uh, I think you're, you're holding back so much, you're actually pushing more air through there the wrong way. Uh, I, I think you do better just actually go ahead and give it the shout. Um, I, I, but one of the things they do where they might have you doing two or three takes, um, you know, for regular dialogue, when you're doing uh, the efforts and the shouting things, uh, well, let's just break it down to you, just one take. If we need another one, we'll ask for it, but let's just do one take on that. So uh, they're they're trying to look out for you. Well, I, I'm glad to hear that. If you're just joining us, you've missed a whole lot already. We're talking with our good buddy, Dave Fenoy, who is a very prominent voice actor here in, here in Hollywood. Uh, you hear him on games, you hear him on promos, you hear him on all sorts of stuff. And right now you're hearing him on VoiceOver Body Shop. And if you have a question for him, we'd love to hear from you. And just go into our Facebook chat room and type in the question, unless you have, like, dictation software. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and we will get to that in our next segment. But uh, it's fascinating hearing about, about the gaming stuff. Do you play the games yourself? Actually, I am not... A gamer. Don't tell them that. <laughs> no, I, hey, you know, you, you got to tell the truth. Now, I do have a, a, a PS4 that I bought at Christmas time. I should have held out for the PS5. And I would have played just as many games on it as I played on the PS4, which is one, and <laughs> haven't played it again since. I just don't have time. Uh, and I, I think probably part of the reason I'm, I'm not a gamer is, is I suck at it. <laughs> <laughs> Practice, practice, Dave. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say. Don't put it in your calendar, just like anything yeah, else. Yeah. Two hours a day. Well, there you go. Because yeah. I could have a professional career as a, as a professional gamer, and, right. and which they have now. And they make more money. I know. <laughs> they are professional gamers. Uh, uh, I was uh, once a celebrity ho uh, host at uh, the World Series of Video Games, which they decided to hold in the Maldives. Okay. And and uh, this was a very high-tech uh, event. They had 20 young men from all across the world that were going to come and play four different video games. It was going to be streamed across the planet, and it was. Uh, but it was a, started a couple days late because for some reason in the middle of the Indian Ocean, the Maldives there, was not the hub of technology uh, and and equipment for technology. So, if you they, didn't, they didn't have, have that a big pipe wire, over there. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! It was a mess. Uh, so they got started a couple of days late. And, and part of the funniest thing was it was all fellas. And now we have a lot of uh, professional women uh, video game players as well. And fifty percent of game players are women. 
but this was before the big switch. And um, so these were all young men between 17 and 25 or six was the oldest. And of course, we're on this beautiful island, the, sh the water lapping the white sand and just so romantic and all these guys with the uh, testosterone just pouring out of their ears and all the women there were with somebody. Oh, brutal. <laughs> he's, he's the poor guy. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, and who says voiceover isn't fun? Uh, oh, yeah, you know, it is. Once again, we're talking with Dave Fenoy. You got a question? Ask it now in the chat room so we can get to that in a second. We're getting a bunch, too, by the way. I, and I'm glad to see that. Yeah. I'm I'm interested, you know, in in your thoughts because you know people really respect what you have to say about these things. But with all the stuff that's been going on, I mean, because people have been forced to work at home, do you see the industry changing permanently, you know, for the better or for worse? Because um, I don't think home? I don't see anything changing permanently. <laughs> There's one thing I've learned doing this for 30 years is, uh, you know, sooner or later, whatever you're doing now, there's going to be a different way of doing it. Right. Uh, but I, I do think that uh, more and more people who might not have wanted to have a great home studio are going to be willing to invest more money in their home studios. Um, I think there are going to be some clients who once only would hire professional studios and have you go there uh, are going to be more open to uh, working with talent from their home studios. I don't think the industry actually had a really good idea of how many people had really good home studios. Uh, and it, it, it falls into two categories. Those who have had them the, mo the longest, I think, were people who uh, had careers doing TV promos. I think the TV promo uh, folks were the first ones to say, oh, okay, uh, we can, you know, they don't have to be in here. Uh, we've got an ISDN box. They got their 416 and a nice booth. Uh, we, even though they can't see it, they can take the audio cues. Or, or better yet, we just know how long uh, their, their, their little sections are. Uh, and they can do it from home, send it to us, saves us time and money. And w we can actually get more out of them. It's, it's a plus for us because we wouldn't have to drive from this studio to this studio to this studio. Um, so. That was a big change, and I think we're going to continue in that vein. Uh, but looking at at voiceover uh, from the time I got in in the '90s, when you know you went to your agents, you went to a studio, uh, you went to your agents to audition. Well, now you audition at home. Now you work more often than not from home. Uh, the opportunities for work, I think, are greater than they ever have been before. You have more people knocking on the door and in the business than ever before. Um, and just taking a look at YouTube, the number of explainer videos uh, and, and corporations that are availing themselves of voice actors uh, to do uh, corporate narration for them, um, you know, from even live announce at their corporate events. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of our corporation, he's a wonderful guy, makes lots more money than you do, Mr. Joe Johnson or whatever, right. uh, to uh, the safety videos that they have or the training videos that they're, they're going to have. Um, uh, corp companies that have products that the instructions, well, they got this little written out thing, but now they've hired somebody to do a video so you can go online and watch, oh, this is how I put this Ikea furniture together. Oh, great. Uh, so there, there, there are lots of, of um, jobs like that. I, I break it up. I call it uh, the high profile and not so high pro profile work. Right. And you know, one's not better than the other. One just gets more attention. But, uh, you know, that green money still spends no matter where it came from. So lots of opportunities there, but also the driving down of the cost, the driving down of our remuneration, what we get paid uh, from Fiverr, um, uh, which they weren't the first, uh, but the, the pay-to-play sites, 
uh, have driven down the cost. And they've driven up their own costs, though, because they become more expensive, which I find fascinating. Yeah, well, uh, I, I think they're this close to being criminals myself. Um, I, and I know a lot of people are having wonderful careers with them, but I think even more people uh, are just pouring money into them. Um, you know, uh, we've had a lot of jokes over the years about agents, um, but your agent ain't making no money unless you make some money. Uh, you, you're not paying your agent every month or every year uh, to be on their roster, and they have a, a vested interest in trying to, A, get you booked, and B, get you more money, whereas the pay-to-play sites, they're not working for you. They're working for the person that's going to hire you, and they're trying to get your services for the very least that they can. Uh, so we become a commodity to be bought cheaply. Uh, and some of them, I know uh, uh, Voices.com uh, instituted that, well, one, you're going to pay 20% for us to handle your money. Uh, and you may never know how much this client uh, actually was going to offer. Right. How so their maybe in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe the budget's $10,000. And you're going to do, you know, 10 commercials or five commercials or something. And, but they ask you to bid on it and you bid 750 and you get it. <laughs> and, uh, and then you pay 20% of that 750 to them. And the, the rest of the money, uh, 9,250 bucks, uh, they pocket. Right. It's to me, it's on, it's not illegal, uh, but it's certainly unconscionable. Well, we, I, I tend to agree with you on that, which is why I dropped off of them like six years ago. That, yeah. That's not going to happen. Anyway. Uh, but, I, yeah. but, but they're, they're there, and I don't think they're going to go away yet. Yeah, they're, they're, there seem to be a, a plethora of them all of a sudden, but a lot of them have yeah. come to the wayside. They won't go away because they provide a service that's convenient, and that's the yeah. problem. Yeah. For like little business people online or around the world, they're – Wait, hold, on yeah. a hold on a second. Extremely convenient. Yeah. We, oh, yeah. You yeah. want to let me take – you want to take that? All right. All right. Who's calling during my show here? Let's find out. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll call back. Okay. Well, see, see, that's the rule on voiceover body shop. If, if, if you, you forget to turn your phone off, which I now have, <laughs> uh, then uh, the uh, caller man, goes on the man. air. You have to answer the who, call. It was usually – Who made the rule? I did. Dan. <laughs> I'm the producer. It's my studio. I make the rule. And but it hasn't happened in a long time. So. In a long time, yeah. <laughs> it's really anyway. We're talking with Dave Fenoy. And uh again, if you've got a question, throw it in the Facebook chat room. We're gonna get to that in just a minute. But right now, we have to hear from our fantastic sponsors. And I know the first spot leads off with a familiar voice. So we'll be right back here on Voice Over Body Shop with Dave Fenoy. Don't go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge reward until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. What question do we get most often? Far and away, it's how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take the voheroes.com free getting started in VO course. You heard right. It's free. 
And it's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the course you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, the business skills you need, and the mindset you need to have all in one single comprehensive online course taught by VO Heroes David H. Lawrence the 17th. This course won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Of course you do. Getting started in VO.com. That's getting started in VO.com. And now a word from Harlan Hogan and VoiceOverEssentials.com. Has this ever happened to you? Embarrassing. The washers on these booms? Eh, they're not so great at holding up your expensive microphone. And here's the answer. The adjustable boom stop is great. Easy to attach and works like a charm. No more droopy mic. It's simple, ingenious, and infinitely adjustable. The padded non-slip pouch fits almost any size boom arm. Unique double loop webbing system for unlimited angle of the downstrap. Works with tripod and solid round bases. Light gray webbing lets you mark and repeat stand settings for each performer. It's three ounces of protection for your expensive microphone with free standard shipping in the continental U.S. Hold up your mic with the ABS Adjustable Boom Stop. Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. Hey. Uh, are, are we back? We are back. Uh, see, we're, yeah, again, I promise. We, we're gonna again, like you were saying, we're gonna have to relearn all this stuff. I mean, one of the monitors isn't working, so I'm like, I'm sort of flying blind here. Yeah. Well, you, you know what? Get used to this. This is going to be our lives from now on. As yep. technology changes so quickly, the things that uh, we're working on that. Oh, we've got this as new technology. A year later, later, two years later, it's obsolete. There's a whole new way of doing things. So uh, I, I think we're gonna be a uh, population of human beings that's constantly relearning. Yep. Well, as long as you're learning, you're still alive, which is good. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, you, you do you do a, a weekly thing on Wednesday nights. Yeah, ask, Wednesday at six ask Dave p.m. Pacific. Anything. Well, ask Dave Fanoy anything. You oh, can't yeah. just ask any Dave. All there right. are a lot of Daves you could ask. Yeah. But this is specifically ask Dave, Dave Fanoy anything. Okay. All right. <laughs> And, uh, you know, uh, I, I just wanted to do something uh, to kind of give back, something to share. Uh, one of the things I like about the voiceover industry is uh, the people in it and uh, people like yourselves who are not only making a living, but you, what you're doing now is you're, you're giving of yourselves. Uh, so this was my way, as uh, many others have done. Uh, and uh, I, I couldn't come up with a really cool, neat title. So uh, since it was going to be, you could ask me stuff. I said, well, I'll call it Ask Dave Fanoy Anything, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific on Facebook Live. Uh, and uh, it, it's it's a lot of fun, even for me. Uh, sometimes you, as the weeks go by, certain questions are always, you always get the mic questions. You always get the booth questions. Um, you always get the, how, how do I get started in a career questions? Um, but there's, there's always something new and unique. Uh, the last one I did, I didn't do one this last, uh, this last Wednesday, nor will I be able to do it this Wednesday because of work. Um, that's first uh, double miss in a while. Uh, but the one just before that, we were talking about what was going on in the world. We were talking about the the protests, um, because it just felt like uh, talking voiceover at that particular moment in time. Yeah, yeah. I, I think people need. It, I think there was a need for some catharsis with a lot of people at yeah. that time. So that was and good. and and we may have some. I had a student today that uh, we got forty five minutes in, and she wanted to talk about. Black Lives Matter and 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 things political. And I said, now you, you realize you're paying me for this time. Why don't we? She says, no, I, says, Why don't I, I just want to talk about this right now. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of people have something to get out. 
uh, have thoughts they want to share. Um, I have gotten more calls from more of my white friends who may have called me just to say, hi, what's up? Or uh, can I get you on this project? Or But just, hey, man, how you doing? Uh, so what do you think about this? Um, so I, I, I kind of think worldwide, when we look at these uh, Black Lives Matter uh, uh, demonstrations and protests, it's all over the world. Yep. All over the world. Um, and I'm hoping that there are enough. And when you look at the crowd, it's everybody. Uh, that uh, we, we're going to hit a tipping point towards justice. Um, and uh, then, of course, we'll need to show up at the polls and <laughs> vote justice. I, well, I, uh, I, I think that's one of the more important things is, yeah, you can go out there and yell and scream, but if you don't go vote, then you're not yeah. helping out here. Yeah, uh, which it's interesting. I, I uh, hear people go, well, this protesting doesn't, doesn't do anything, but it always has, actually. Absolutely. It always has. Yeah. But you're anyway, ready, yeah, you're back ready to, to voiceover. Yeah, you ready to take some questions from our vast voiceover audience? Well, let's, let's take some questions, All shall right. we? All right. We got, we, we got a lot, so we'll keep it moving. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's at least 10 of them here. Um, quickie from Randy Thomas. Hey, Dave. Hey, did you, Randy. <laughs> did you know my friend Billy Bass in Cleveland? He was a jock. Then I Randy did not know Billy Bass. I left Cleveland in 1970, yeah. uh, and, and uh, my parents moved, and I haven't been back. Yeah. History, ancient yeah. history. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Joe Mambu says, "Hey, how do you go about finding a voiceover coach, especially in these self quarantine times?" Now, Randy, he she chimed in because she's in the chat, and she said, "Ask people who have what you consider great demos, and ask who coached them." And then let's see what Dave says. Well, you know, I, I think that's – there more than one way to skin a cat. I think that's a pretty good way, uh, people who have good demos. Uh, I would start paying attention to um, voiceover over social media and who people are talking about, who are people uh, taking uh, voiceover lessons from. The names that keep coming up over and over are probably the people that you want to talk to. There are a lot of people out there have no business teaching. Um, and, you know, usually these are the people that they're not going to have a long track record. You won't, if you Google them, you're not going to find that much. Uh, but uh, Randy herself, you, you, you Google Randy, you're going to find a lot about her, not only her teaching, but her work. Uh, and the same thing of so many good voiceover teachers here and i always suggest people look you should work with more than just one person um i do teach promo i do teach narration i do teach uh commercial work but i have a really special niche in video games and i i don't have any problem uh sending people to uh somebody who's really specializing in TV promos, really specializing in narration, really specializing in, in commercial. Uh, so uh, if you know a good coach, one of the things you might do, I refer people to other coaches all the time. Yeah, talk to a good coach, because uh, that good coach, A, they've got enough business. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to, to stack up my business, I'm trying to help people. Uh, and if I'm not the one, I, I, I can send you to the one. That's always helpful. If you know somebody's going to work well with somebody else who has a particular niche, then that's that's always very helpful. For, for whatever reason, maybe, right. okay, this is a woman. Let me let her talk to this woman over here who, you know, has been through the, uh, the ringer that women have to go through and is doing a similar thing, the kind of thing that this woman wants to do. Yep. Well, Randy has a question also about um, video game voice, how you keep healthy or how can you be healthy? Really, she's saying is if someone is a healthy voice or has a, a healthy voice practice, how many video games can an actor actually manage to do in a year? Whew. Uh, well, you know, I don't know how, <laughs> how many games do I do in a year. I'm on almost 500 games now. Um <sighs> couple of things here first of all 
it's not a myth that video games can be tough on your voice, uh, but it's also true that not all the games uh, have a lot of shouting and screaming in them. Um, so to look back at the game I'm best known for, The Walking Dead game, um, there was very little in the way of uh, uh, screaming uh, like you might find in, in uh, a Gears of War that I'm also in, where you have days where, okay, we got two hours of, of shouting here. Um, and there's so many games now that there, they may, there may be some shouting, there may be uh, some efforts, uh, but they're limited. So not all games are going to be as tough on your throat as some others. Um, but the thing to do, stay hydrated. Uh, if you're in a really tough session, uh, take your breaks. You know, usually they're going to give you a break every hour, but if you've gone, you know, 40 minutes and you've been, you know, burning that voice, take some time, get some hot water, tea and honey. Um, give yourself 10 minutes before you go back. Uh, the voice does heal quickly. Uh, more quickly than, say, your outer skin. Uh, but if, say, you uh, had a tough session on a Friday, shut up Friday night. Give yourself some rest uh, Saturday morning. All right. There you go. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Lad Wed Wed Wendelin. I'll bet you I got that right. Uh, it says, uh, two questions. I've made a commercial promo narration reels and feel confident I have something to offer. What's the next step in furthering my career? Seek agents or go after clients? Why not both? Absolutely. Um, you know, depending on where you are and what your uh, status is with the union, um, agents are going to be more or less interested, but you're going to have to keep knocking on those doors uh, because most agents are not at the point of looking for new talent. They're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're looking... Uh, for a reason not to take you on because they've got so much talent and everybody's trying to get at them. Does that mean they're not going to take people? No. Um, you know, if you've got the goods, uh, somebody's going to be interested in helping you out uh, because it will help them out. Uh, but in this do-it-yourself world that we're living in now, um, unfortunately, we live in the same world uh, that the of everybody else where unions are not as strong as they were 20, 30 years ago. Uh, and there's been a war on the American worker for a long time. How can we get you to do more for less money? And that includes us. So um, you might have to turn to uh, the pay to play sites a little bit. You might have to turn to marketing yourself. Uh, doing the research on a LinkedIn or Chambers of Commerce to find out the kinds of businesses that you want to work for, how to get in touch with them, and then market yourself to them. Of course, now, once you do that, your website has to be ready to receive that business so they can hear your demos and get in touch with you. And I would recommend that uh, if you're setting that up, set up yourself a, uh, uh, a rate sheet uh, so you don't have to have those uncomfortable conversations. Uh, well, I'm not sure how, uh, I was thinking maybe, no, oh, well, my rate sheet is this. You can base it off of union rates and there's some other uh, places, some other voiceover groups that you can base those rates off of uh, so that you show up as a professional, that you are offering a service uh, to people who are looking for your service and never, ever ask for work. Offer your services. Don't ask for work. All righty. Uh, got a question here from Dominic Carlos. Uh, what motivation techniques have you used when work doesn't come in as frequent, frequently as it did before? <laughs> well, you know, we all, we all go through that. Um, if you set yourself up as a business, that this is what you do, uh, you're really looking at uh, working every day at this. So when you're, you've got a lot of auditions coming in and you've got a lot of work, that's what you're doing. Uh, when you don't have a lot of auditions coming in uh, and a lot of work, uh, market yourself. That's, that's when you spend your time instead of auditioning because there aren't any or work because it's not coming in, marketing yourself. Uh, you got clients that you've worked for a lot and haven't heard from in a while, 
send them a note. Let them know you're there. Uh, you haven't got an agent. You've been working on your own. Now's a good time to uh, send out your demo to agents um, and 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 follow up. A lot of people want to send uh, something one time and expect a yay or a nay. Chances are, as a salesman will tell you, it's five touches before something good happens. So if you have sent your goods to an agent and maybe they sent you back a note, thanks, but no thanks. We have somebody like you on our roster already. Uh, if they got back in touch at all, count that as a win. Uh, you get something new, uh, let them know what you're doing. Uh, come circle back, as they say, uh, and, and keep staying in touch. All righty, George. Next one I'm seeing here that uh, let's jump to um, how do you deal? This is also from Lad. He asked one earlier, but this one's about sibilance. How do you control sibilant S's for people that have maybe a little bit sibilant of a gap? -ish, yeah, a, ga a gap in their front teeth. Um, <laughs> have you helped somebody coach uh, the sibilance out of their voice before? I actually have never helped anybody coach the sibilance out of their voice. Uh, one, stay hydrated uh, so that, you know, you're cutting down on mouth noises anyway. Um, one of the things you can do is is work your mic off access, uh, and that will help you cut down on some of the sibilance. Um, yeah, as you get to the side a little bit more, it gets yeah, less and less bright. It gets in, you, yeah, it gets yeah. less and less bright. Um and there, there are some electronic ways. There's de-essers and whatnot. They tend to do a little more than just get rid of the S's. Um, but I would practice how you pronounce things. I would spend some time uh, practicing how you pronounce uh, those words that have those S's in them so that you uh, kind of work your way out of what your mouth and tongue is doing to create them. Yeah. I find that if people are over projecting, which, you know, and I listen to a lot of stuff from people, they they're over they're pushing it too much. They're not keeping that intimate conversation that, you know, commercial voiceover really is. And when they talk louder, they tend to hit the T's and the S's a little bit harder. And that tends to cause more sibilance because I don't I don't particularly believe that anybody's more sibilant than anybody else but no I I, I don't either but yeah. and which is why I say one of the things you want to do might be to uh okay what am I doing when I'm sibilant oh I'm doing that well let me learn how to not do that yeah all right got one more question here from Betsy Zalcho Z Zachko that's what it is she says uh I'm and now you know how the Olympic uh, uh, sport announcers feel when all those names <laughs> yeah, come Yeah, really? Yeah. yeah, I mean, but they practice them. It's like, you know, and here comes... <laughs> yeah, they do. They, it helps. Um, I'm an actor and came into voiceover via radio. Welcome to the club. Uh, I recently have gotten more game auditions and am not a gamer. So every time I get an audition for a game, I end up going to Twitch or YouTube and even after listening to examples, I wonder if I'm missing a key element. What adjustments do you need? Do you make for acting in games? Well, uh, pr acting in video games is probably closer to uh, being on stage or on film uh, than any other area of uh, voiceover work, uh, except for the very high-end commercials where they're hiring high-end actors to do them. Um, a lot of times I came out of radio and often when we've come out of radio, uh, we have gotten used to uh, reading scripts that we're really not connected to, uh, but doing a dance with the words to make it sound like we know what we're talking about and that we care about this. <laughs> right. And if you just stop by, you can get 50% off now. That's right, 50. We're doing a little bit of that thing. Now, if you've got that and you do that, great. Uh, it'll serve you for the things that require that. Uh, but when you're playing a character, uh, stop worrying about your enunciation. Stop worrying about, oh, the sentence starts here and ends there, and I need to go from there to there without stop. Play, the words are not that important then. I know that sounds crazy. The words are only important in that they give you detail of what your character's thinking and feeling. But what you want to play 
is this character's thoughts and feelings, this, who this character is, their worldview. That's what you want to play. It, it, it's forget about enunciating the words and making that clear. Play this character. It's acting. It, it's acting. Acting, yes. Anyway, Dave, it has been a super major league pleasure having you back on the show here and hearing your wisdom and, and, and really uh, seeing what, you know, your view of the voiceover world. And I can't wait till you can actually come back over here. Oh, boy. And oh see boy. how we've changed everything in here. I, I, I know you've moved on up and doing things uh, much slicker. Uh, but yeah, and let me pat you guys on the back because you've been doing this for years, nine years, uh, nine years. And uh, I mean, uh, Dan, I knew George before you. George was the go to guy. And then you moved to town. You guys hooked up. Um, but the service you offer and, and, and things like this, you get the best talent on um, talking about what they do. And it's a it's a real benefit to a whole lot of people. So thank you for what you guys do. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thanks for being with Thanks, us today. Dave. My pleasure. All right. We'll see you soon. Hopefully face to face. All right. All right. We're going to take a quick break here. We'll be right back to wrap things up and ready to re-rack things for Tech Talk. So stay where you are. Don't go away. We'll be right back. This is Anthony Mendez. You're watching VoiceOver Body Show. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Well, it's the time of the show. We get to talk about one of our longtime sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. At this point, if you're a voice actor, you've probably been asked to have Source Connect by one of your agents or just another voiceover person in the business who's heard something about Source Connect. Well, yes, it is true. Source Connect has become an extremely popular tool for remote recording voice talent anywhere in the world from elsewhere in the world or just down the street sometimes in this current environment we're in now where we just can't go into studios. Um, so you want to get on, you want to get it together, get up and going and with Source Connect. But the good thing is you don't have to spend money right now. You could just go to Source Elements, set up a demo account, and get a 15 day trial. And that way you're up and running. You understand the how to make the software work. You know that it works with your system. You've done all the homework and the preparation to have it running great. So when that uh, request comes along saying, do you have Source Connect? You can honestly say yes. And at that point, activate your license. You can buy it out for 
a lifetime buyout. You can do a monthly subscription. And I think they're even doing like a two day uh, day licenses at this point. So there's a lot of ways you can get Source Connect. So head over to source-elements.com, get yourself set up. If you need a little extra hand holding, go to georgethetech.com. I have a Source Connect help section over there with a lot of helpful information, including a video that you gotta watch to get yourself up to speed. Anyway, thanks Source Elements, we appreciate it. We'll be right back to wrap this up right after this. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Shop. Oh, I'm good. Well, we know that. Anyway, um, thanks again to Dave Fenoy for uh, imparting his wisdom on us, and uh, that was that was just great. Uh, George, yes, who are our donors of the week? Oh yes, we do have donors, don't we? Right. Um, let's scroll down to the donor section. Uh, we've got a list of names you guys have probably heard before because we get a lot of regular donors to the show, which is really kind. Um, we really do appreciate it. On the list right now I'm seeing is Harlow Rodriguez, Michael Kearns, Christy Burns, Graham Spicer, Uncle Roy's Antland Productions, Michelle Blanker, and Christopher Epperson. That's Thank you one. so much. All right. Yeah. Hey, join Appreciate our it. mailing list too. Uh, if you go to our homepage, is, is, you know, join the mailing list, you can get on there. We're getting close to 700, George. I'd like to see that. That's uh, great. Yeah. And we'll send out uh, notices to you that, you know, who's coming on and what we're up to and uh, keep you informed as to what the guys are, are doing here. Speaking of numbers, I just saw we ticked over the 4,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. Oh, How right. about that? 4,000. Pretty awesome. All right. So keep watching, guys. Thanks, right. everybody. Yeah. We need to thank our sponsors, too, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, and JMC Demos. All right. Uh, thanks to uh, Jeff Holman. I think he was on chat room duty tonight, didn't he? He was. He was. All right. He was a good job. Uh, and uh, our technical director doing it. Yeah. flying blind from her, her place in Burbank, Sue Merlino, and of course, Lee yeah. Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, we've got next week, we've got Tech Talk number 35, which we're about to get into, and uh, another great guest in, coming up. Uh, it's almost July. Holy crap. All righty. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's t we're going to get into all sorts of cool stuff here in our next segment, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm Dan Leonard, and you want to know something? If it sounds good. It is good. And you are? George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. <laughs> Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS. We'll see you next time, guys. <laughs>